sports there. I was also at Chapel Hill before that and the University of South Florida. So the focus of our summer workouts is just to reestablish a broad base. So if you look at general flows to specific and the further along you get in the season, you spend more and more time actually playing basketball, which is great because that's what you do, but you lose some of the general athleticism. It's just like, you know, you could be a baseball pitcher and have great ability to pitch the ball, but have lost all your ability to jump and sprint and just do these general movements. And if you lose that base, you know, you get this inverse pyramid and that area underneath the pyramid becomes your potential for injury, for burnout and all these different things. So we've got to reestablish the base and I've been really fortunate to have a staff here that values strength conditioning and gives me enough time to actually do that. So we spend a ton of time with just very simple drills, whether it's one step coming off the line for accelerations, um, just hammering our squat and our jumping technique and our deceleration technique. And when those things are in place, and you just, it just takes repetition, I mean, it's thousands and thousands of repetitions. When those things are in place, you start to notice athletes doing habitually the things that they used to have to think so much about. So now they're coming off the line without a false step. Now they're decelerating, getting their feet under their hips, which the most efficient positions in the workout are also the least likely to get you injured. So we're attacking everything on all fronts. When we're getting stronger, when we're getting more efficient, we're also preventing injuries. So it's, it's a comprehensive look at what we're trying to achieve. So we have three primary lifts um, during the week and every third day is a team competition, so because of our difference in schedule this year where we're going to play on Thursday and immediately turn around and play another game on Saturday, that fatigue is really going to stack up on the end of the week. So we've arranged our workouts where we train Monday, take Tuesday off, and then we stack the end of the week, so we train Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I didn't want to have two heavy lifts back to back, so I put those on Wednesday and Friday, but Thursday we do team competition, and we lacked a little bit of competitive drive last year. So that Thursday is just, whether we're in buddy pairs or two teams or teams of three or four, it's all about just getting that competitive drive, having a little bit of fun and also team building activities where you can't do it unless you're working with your team. The other lifts um, are pretty basic in nature, but we want to attack speed, strength, all the major qualities that flow into athleticism. Um, we do that with our squats, our bench press, our deadlifts, um, lots of jumping variations. So coming out of the season, we've got a lot of wear and tear that's been put on the athlete's body, especially when you consider it's a sport that's played on hardwood, it's a lot of contact. Um, so coming out of the season, we try to put the brakes on the athletes a little bit. We still want them to be full go all the time, but I put them in an environment that dictates that it has to be lower impact. So we run on a grass hill. Um, they're still attacking the hill running as fast as they can every time, but because you're running uphill, the force of gravity is going to be less on the body. It's a softer surface. Uh, we transition to sled resisted sprints, which are great for springing mechanics, teaching that first step. And yet at the same time, the load on your waist is going to dictate that it has to be a little bit slower. Um, recently, we've transitioned to contrast sprints, so we immediately take the sled off and then you get some full speed sprints. Again, just hammering technique, but the impact is still lower. Um, the last phase of training, we'll do some flying sprints, so basically you get actually some momentum going into your sprint and it's full go. So you look at both impact and the power. The power is going up as the closer we get to season, so we're more at full speed activity. The technique is in place because we've been building that the whole time, and we've reduced impact over the course of the off season, so by the time we get to season, we're good and healthy, we're ready to go. Um, the same type of stuff happens in the weight room. So we look at our jumping early on was all onto a box, cueing more so not the box height, but how we landed, good technique to prevent injury. The further on we go, it's all about contact time. So can you hit the ground twice and hop back up before someone gets off the ground once? Um, you see that in the best basketball players have amazing reaction time, but you can't have good reaction time if you don't know how to land first. You gotta land one jump correctly before you can do two. You can't train for too many things at one time. So our biggest thing is to have three indicators that I think we train in basketball. So obviously as a strength and conditioning professional, it's important to understand that I don't train a specific sports skill. So I don't obviously train their shot or anything that specific. But I ask, what are the three most general qualities that make a good basketball player? And I look at vertical jump, 
a 10 yard acceleration and then our squat and the squat because I know that if the squat goes up then the 10 yard acceleration and the vertical jump are almost guaranteed to go up. So those are the three biggest things that we attack in training. Um, so by the end of the year I would like to see 40 to 50 pounds put on their squat when that happens usually one or two inches will get put on their vertical jump um, which once you're at this level of a D1 athlete one to two inches counts for a lot. Um, we'd like to shave a couple tenths of a second off their acceleration time because the first step is everything in basketball. You could be the most conditioned person in the world, but if you get beat off the first step, nothing after that really matters. I'd say our biggest progress, I mean, aside from our numbers have definitely improved, is just the team atmosphere and the culture. And that was something that came in day one talking a lot about, is that weight room culture is a premium. If you don't have that in place, it doesn't matter. You could have the best workout in the world. And if you can't get kids to buy it, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. So I talked a lot about it last year. I preached on it, but it wasn't really actually in place. But I believe not where we were at, but where we were headed towards. And that day in, day out belief and just constantly preaching those same things about body language, about the type of energy, the type of positive talk that needs to be in place. We're finally starting to see that come just second nature. They don't even realize they're doing it, but it's just a part of the culture now. And it's awesome because when that's coming from the upperclassmen, the freshmen come in and that's all they've ever known. So you see the freshmen doing those things by default just because that's it's just osmosis. That's what they're around. So it's coming in inside of them. And it's just really awesome. I would say we have great buy-in this year. That's been the biggest difference is just like I haven't been here for a little over a year now. The athletes know me. When I first came in, like, why is this guy always yelling and screaming at me? Why does he care so much if I yawn? And I think they've finally come to realize just how much I actually care about them. And I know coming from Kansas, we had a winning culture there. I mean, Coach Hootie has 13 national championship rings. So anytime she talked about weight room culture, my ears were wide open. And the biggest thing I learned from her is that you have to show the athletes how much you care because they won't care until they know how much you care. And once they realized how invested I was in their success and how invested Coach Kerr is, and they have now a consistent message from whether it's athletic training, strength and conditioning, the head coach, all the way on down through assistants, they realize how much we care about them and they're willing to go the extra mile for us, and that's just made all the difference in the world. I think all the coaches have agreed we're in the best place we've been in a long time. we still got a couple months before the season starts. It's exciting. we got a young team, got a lot of positive energy, a lot of positive momentum, so good things from here to come. We are playing good. We are playing good. Take the pain away. Take the pain away.